What is up, peoples? We are back. Hope y'all had fun opening day or maybe just watching the Royals kick off their season. But now it's time to lock in on some Chiefs news, the latest coming up on Chiefs News Daily. I'm Haley Lewis, and over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to get you all caught up on Kansas City Chiefs headlines. Remember, the show drops weekdays at 7 p.m. Central Time every single day, Monday through Friday. Let's get into it. Well, although the Royals didn't get the dub, Coach Reed definitely did. Chiefs head coach Andy Reed took to the diamond on opening day to throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Now, I was hoping for some punt pass kick kind of action, at least something better than Travis Kelsey's first pitch. And Big Red delivered. That'll work. We're going to call it a strike. Way to represent, Coach. No good deed left unpunished, though. QB1 had to put in his own critique. Patrick Mahomes taking to Twitter saying, Anyone know if Coach Reed threw a strike with laughing emojis to follow. It is trolling at its finest. We gotta protect Big Red at all costs. Now Mahomes not the only one busy on social media. Looks like Travis Kelsey is working on his golf game during his free time and maybe his singing skills? I mean Kelsey Jam is around the corner so maybe for that. The tight end was spotted on the golf course via former NBA player Chandler Parsons Instagram story. Now Parsons tagged Kelsey in a video saying, Kill a Trav cannot be rattled. Apparently, Crew played his pop star girlfriend Taylor Swift's Bad Blood song in the background while Kelsey was setting up for his swing. Instead, Kelsey is able to keep his composure, nails the shot, then joins in to sing and dance along, even a little air guitar action. Okay, I see you there. And last one from the socials, Matt McMullen sharing on Twitter today that the Chiefs offseason dates have been announced. The Chiefs can start phase one of the Chiefs offseason training program beginning on April 15th. OTAs kick off on May 20th, and minicamp will take place the beginning of June on the 11th. Well, looks like there's going to be a new running back coming to town soon. The news broke late Wednesday night. The Chiefs are signing Welsh rugby star Luis Rees Zamet. Now, if you remember, we actually talked about this just a couple days ago. It was reported that Rees Zamet was in town visiting the Chiefs. On Tuesday, Ian Rappaport reported via X that Rees Zamet one of the more high-profile international names at International Player Pathway Program, is visiting the Chiefs today. That was on Tuesday. He visited the Broncos on Monday, a source said as well. And he spent last week with the Browns and the Jets. So I guess things went well here in Kansas City. And just one day later, Bleacher Report's own Jordan Schultz tweeted out that rugby star Luis Rezamet will be signing with the Chiefs on Friday. That is today per sources. He worked out and gave an impressing show to Kansas City staff earlier this week. They have agreed on terms. Now, this is Schultz saying this. I am told Reese Zamet will be playing running back slash wide receiver. And then Ian Rappaport shared this morning that the deal is worth three years, one that includes some guaranteed money and a signing bonus. So how did a rugby star land himself in the NFL? Well, we're going to break things down for you. This report comes via ESPN's Adam Teicher. He said the 23-year-old announced in January that he would attempt to play in the NFL. He participated in the NFL's International Player Pathway Pro Day last week. He ran a 4.43 in the 40-yard dash. Reese Zamet, who is from Wales, then made visits to a handful of teams before agreeing to contract terms with the Chiefs. The season marks the first time that each team will have a 17th roster spot on the practice squad specifically available for an international player. Teams also are permitted to elevate an international practice squad player to the active roster a maximum of three times throughout the season, increasing opportunities for players to develop and get a chance to play. Now, teams also receive one training camp roster exemption for a qualifying international player. Now, Teicher goes on to say his biggest immediate impact could come on special teams, and particularly as a return specialist under the NFL's new kickoff format. For those of you who haven't heard the kickoff, it's going to look a lot different come August. Let's recap real quickly what you're going to see. Now, after years of tweaks turned one of the game's most exciting moments into a dead ceremonial play, the league hopes this overhaul will yield what it wants, fewer injuries and more returns. This is Tom Pelissero explaining this on Twitter. He goes on to say, the new rule is in place on a one-year trial basis, so they'll give it a shot and it'll be subject to renewal in 2025. Under the new hybrid rule, the kickoff spot won't change, however, the touchback location will change depending on where the ball lands. When the ball sails into or beyond the end zone, the receiving team will begin at its own 30-yard line. 
If the ball lands in the field of play and bounces into the end zone for a touchback, the receiving team will start at its 20. If the ball lands in the field of play and doesn't reach the end zone, there is no fair catch or touchback option and the ball must be returned. The new kickoff rule eliminates one key aspect as well. The surprise onside kick is now dead. Teams must declare their intention to do an onside kick if they want to attempt it. With this newest addition to the running back rule, let's take a little bit of time to look at the current situation and the position depth. The Chiefs have made it clear their RB1 is Isaiah Pacheco, but who backs him up? Well, that's up for question. Currently on the Chiefs roster, Pop sits at RB1 all alone, Michael P. Ryan at RB2, followed by Daenerys Prince at 3 and Keontae Ingram at 4. Remember, Pacheco's primary backups last season were Clyde Edwards-Alaire and Jarek McKinnon, who still remain unsigned. They're both free agents. So really, Pacheco was the only one within that group that has some serious playing experience. Now, it is still plausible they could bring back CEH or even Jarek McKinnon, but we'll have to wait and see. So here are some veterans in addition to McKinnon and CEH that the Chiefs could explore in free agency. Right now, here is the list. Ezekiel Elliott, Boston Scott, Cam Akers, J.K. Dobbins, and Rashad Penny. Now let's shift to the NFL Draft, where it's less than a month away. We'll bring in KCSN's own Kit Swanson, who joins us now to break down who might be available when the Chiefs go on the clock. If the Chiefs are looking for someone to be a third down back, Dylan Johnson makes a ton of sense. Really good in pass protection, really comfortable in the passing game. And, I mean, he's a good runner still. He would be a perfect role player to kind of compliment Isaiah Pacheco. I think he makes a lot of sense. If you're looking for someone on day three, I'd look at Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. He's a guy that's just really well coached. He does everything well. He's not a overly dynamic player, but if you want someone that can protect the passer, if you want someone that can catch the ball a little bit out of the backfield, a, a, a strong runner, Isaiah Davis makes sense. My favorite, though, and he does it. He's not the perfect fit, but humor me a little bit. Imagine Braylon Allen, the massive young running back out of Wisconsin, running with Isaiah Pacheco in the backfield. That is a terrifying pair of running backs that teams will not want to tackle for four quarters. Those are three to watch. All right, guys, let's get to some of our loyal listeners here, and let's hear your thoughts so far on Chiefs News Daily. Remember, we want you to be a part of it. It's not just my show. We want you to be involved, too. Make sure you join our LLC it's the exclusive Loyal Listeners Club. It is free to join. You get perks for supporting the show. That's where you can ask me questions. We can interact. Also interact with other fans and win cool stuff. Who doesn't like cool stuff? All right. Click the link in the description. Find out how you can join the LLC. It costs you nothing. Let's get into the questions now here. This one coming from Brian Kind. He says, I'm kind of fired up about the signing of a rugby player. I mean, Reed will dial up something you think for him. What's your take on how they will use him if he makes the team? Number one, I appreciate your question, Brian. First and foremost, the kid is going to bring this team speed. He was tracked running 4.43 on his 40-yard dash. It's been reported that the 23-year-old once hit a top speed of 24.2 miles per hour during a rugby match. Now, the top speed recorded in the NFL last season, it was 22.23. That was by DK Metcalf. Now, I think we're all dying to know exactly how Reed plans to utilize him. Based off his skill set and the reports, you could expect to see the kid worked in at wide receiver and running back. But what I'm pumped to see, potentially could they use him during the kickoff return? He could be one hell of a return specialist with that kind of speed. Also interesting, this signing comes just days after the NFL changes the kickoff rules for the 2024 season. But if the NFL is encouraging more returns, then the Chiefs might just have themselves something good served up right here. I'll be curious to see how he transitions, though, into the NFL. I can't imagine that would be easy. The NFL's international player pathway has led several success stories, though. Bleacher Report putting out there that the most notable one is Philadelphia Eagles star left tackle Jordan Maialata, a former Australian rugby player, so we shall see. All right, guys, that does it for another episode of Chiefs News Daily. Again, if you haven't joined the LLC, sign up. It's free. We want you there. It's the Loyal Listeners Club, and it keeps you in a loop, and it's a fun way to interact with our crew over at KCSN. Plus, you can win cool prizes. Right now, we got a Trent McDuffie signed jersey going away. Make sure you check out the other prizes. There are other contests you can join as well. I jump in daily. We get to chat. You get to hear what other fans are saying. So keep the questions coming. And we will see you on Monday, 7 p.m. Central Time. Have a good weekend.